Hi, my name is Eric. I'm an engineer with National Instruments, and today I'm very excited to introduce you to the very first vector signal transceiver, the PXIE 5644R, which combines a vector signal generator, vector signal analyzer, and digital I.O. with real-time FPGA-based signal processing and control, all in a PXI Express three-slot form factor. The PXIE 5644R vector signal transceiver, or VST for short, features a frequency range of up to 6 GHz and up to 80 MHz of instantaneous bandwidth, which makes it ideally suited for testing the latest wireless standards such as 802.11ac and LTE. 802.11ac is particularly challenging because of the 256 QAM modulation, the high bandwidth signal, multiple antennas, and it operates in the 5 gig band. Here we have the PXIE 5644R vector signal transceiver in a side of four slot PXI Express chassis. We have it set up so the generator is looping back to the analyzer and we're generating an 80 megahertz bandwidth, 256 QAM, 802.11 AC waveform. Let's take a look at what that measurement would look like. Here I have the NIWLAN generation software panel generating that waveform. And here's the NIWLAN analysis software panel acquiring the waveform. Here we can see the spectral mask showing 80 megahertz bandwidth. And if I switch over to the time domain measurements, we can see a power versus time graph as well as a constellation plot showing off the 256 QAM modulation. Here we're seeing an industry-leading EVM measurement of minus 46 dB, which is extremely good. Now let's see what this would look like in a traditional box setup. Here we have a similar setup with the Agilent MXG generating an 802.11ac 80 MHz bandwidth 256 QAM signal to the Agilent PXA. And we can see that they're measuring minus 44 dB, which is 2 dB worse than what the vector signal transceiver measures. We compared the PXIE 5644R vector signal transceiver with the Agilent PXA and MXG for other standards as well. Here are our results. As you can see, the PXIE 5644R VST is on par with the measurements made by the Agilent PXA and MXG. We also looked at comparing it to a production test system. These production testers typically can only test wireless connectivity or cellular measurements. This one in particular could not test WLAN, which is why there's an X in that column. In addition, we looked at test times. The PXIE 5644R VST was anywhere between 5 and 10 times faster than the Agilent PXA and MXG, and was still faster than the production tester designed only to test cellular measurements. In summary, the PXIE 5644R vector signal transceiver gives you the fast measurement speed and small form factor of a production tester, but the high performance and high flexibility of an R&D grade box instrument. So we've seen how the PXIE 5644R vector signal transceiver behaves like a traditional vector signal analyzer and generator right out of the box. Now let's take a look at how we can customize the FPGA to give it a frequency domain trigger. Here in this LabVIEW front panel, I have my spectral mask here, which acts as the trigger level for my frequency domain trigger. As I drag the trigger threshold down, we can see that it triggers the measurement at about 0 dB. So let's take a look at how this is implemented in LabVIEW FPGA. First, we'll take a look at my host block diagram. We see that on the bottom half of the screen is where the generation is being done. And the middle section of the block diagram is where the acquisition is being done. And then here on the top part of the block diagram is where I've implemented the frequency domain trigger. This VI in particular is where we're downloading the spectral mass to the FPGA onto memory that we've allocated specifically for it. So let's dig down into this code and see what's exactly going on. Now on a traditional instrument, as you dig down into the source code, eventually you'll hit some type of wall, either a DLL or an instrument call, which allows no modification and is vendor defined. With the vector signal transceiver, the driver is completely open for the user to modify it as they see fit. So here we've seen that we've drilled all the way down into the LabVIEW FPGA IO node where we're actually writing the spectral mask to FPGA memory called compare data that we've allocated. Now let's switch over to the LabVIEW FPGA VI to see what this looks like. Here we can see the acquisition loop that is part of the default personality of the vector signal transceiver. Here on the left, we can see the raw RF INQ data coming in, going through some digital signal processing. And here on the right, we can see our frequency domain trigger VI. Let's dig down and see what this looks like. As we can see, our I and Q signals come in, go through a windowing function, as well as an FFT or fast Fourier transform. And this third VI is where we compare the power spectrum to our spectral mask, 
which then sends out the trigger on this Boolean output. If we switch back to our higher level VI, we can see that the trigger is directly wired to the acquisition VI. This is all being implemented on the FPGA in real time at the sample clock rate of the vector signal transceiver, which is 120 megahertz. This is all made possible by the single cycle time loop in LabVIEW FPGA. And this is only one small example of what you can do with the vector signal transceiver. By moving the processing from the host to the FPGA and reducing the throughput necessary, we can speed up measurement times, do more averaging, which gives users a higher confidence in their measurement. There are many other examples of things we can do, such as noise correction, inline filtering, pipelining, and don't forget duct control with the digital I.O. All these things would be impossible to do on a traditional vector signal generator and vector signal analyzer, which is what makes the vector signal transceiver different and much more powerful. So we've seen how powerful it can be to customize the FPGA for taking measurements. Now let's completely redesign our PXI 5644R to become something completely different beyond what a traditional vector signal analyzer and generator can do. In this case, we've redesigned our instrument to be a 2x2 two two MIMO radio channel emulator, which simulates a physical radio environment. In this case, we have two vector signal transceivers and an 8-slot PXI Express chassis receiving a signal from two generators, applying channel fading models, and then outputting a signal back to some spectrum analyzers, where we'll take a look at the results. So let's take a look at what this would look like in LabVIEW. Here is the LabVIEW front panel for our 2x2 MIMO radio channel emulator. On the left-hand side, we can see our generation settings. In the middle, we have the different parameters for the fading models applied on the FPGA. On the right-hand side, we see the spectrums acquired by our analyzers. I can put in some impairments showing spectral nulls at delays of 100 and 200 nanoseconds respectively. I can also add interference from adjacent channels. Here we're also showing interference from channel 2 onto channel 1. And this model is deterministic, so we're testing our signals. But if we move to a stochastic model, we can see what this would look like in real time. As I modify the Doppler frequency, this shows how quickly the environment changes. We can see that represented in the graphs to the right. So we've seen how the PXIE 5644R is a high-performance vector signal analyzer and vector signal generator right out of the box, beating the competition. It's got the size and speed of a production test system and the performance and flexibility of an R&D grade box instrument. We've also seen how simple customization to the FPGA can implement powerful features such as a frequency domain trigger. And finally, we've seen how you can customize your VST to be beyond what a vector signal analyzer and generator can do such as a 2x2 two two MIMO radio channel emulator. Thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about the PXIE 5644R vector signal transceiver, please visit ni.com VST.